Hi guys, it's Amy Hager here with Self Healing Inspiration and I'm at Woodstock Fruit Festival 2021 and I'm here with the fabulous Grant Campbell. Hello. <laughs> and uh, he is a uh, big time runner and a running coach and I went on a run with him this morning we went to the pinnacle up this mountain we just saw these gorgeous vistas at the top of the mountain and uh, I work out regularly but I am not in running shape <laughs> and my legs are still hurting me you did great that, yeah. was, that was impressive yeah thank you thank you so Grant's been doing workshops at the festival all week long and uh, we are just here to hear from Grant. Like, Grant, when did you start running? <laughs> when did I start running? Wow. <laughs> when he's a baby. I've been, I've, I ran poorly as uh, growing up. That's the first time you ran. <laughs> no, I'm when I went vegan in uh, 1999, when I was 26 okay. years old, I started running more. Okay. Um, and, and a few years after that, I, I remember running around a track with some coaches and I was keeping up with, with all these other good runners like yeah. so that's I remember having this feeling of running around the track going I'm a runner because <laughs> like I just had that up. yeah because before when I couldn't keep up I didn't think of myself as a runner okay. even though I'd already done some long races I just didn't so that was when I became a runner okay wow and so you came, you said you became vegan at 26 yeah okay how what did, how did that come about uh, a friend had a conversation with me he mentioned about factory farmed animals um, getting cancer and that meat ending up on supermarket shelves for us to eat <laughs> yeah. and the idea of um, animals being slaughtered having all that adrenaline and hormones through their flesh and um, from the fear and, and the idea the concept was that eating that affects your behavior and I, I, I believe that is true because that's what I experienced when I stopped eating meat right. I was less judgmental I, and I, I just like people societies to generalize like it's not this rule for everybody but to generalize I find societies that eat a lot more meat they tend to be a bit more aggressive and right. have more violence and more um, I guess ignorance really and um, and people just like I couldn't think as clearly you know eating heavy foods like that so right, right. for me I, I felt like I'm on a spiritual journey just from going you know getting um, really clean with my body I felt like that was just the natural next step you know so I uh, I felt like I was healing my soul in a way, <laughs> you know, like it was just this incredible healing journey that I kind of went on. Well, let's stick with running. <laughs> so tell us about this kind of running that you do. You do ultra marathons? Yeah. Or I've what run, exactly is it? You do really long distance I've races? run more than, I've completed more than 70 ultra marathons. Now. Wow. I started ultras in 2004. Okay. So it's been 17 years. Wow. And, um, I love it. And I, What's I, an ultra marathon? 100 an miles? An ultra marathon is anything longer than a marathon. A marathon is 26.2 miles or okay. 42.195 kilometers. Okay. <laughs> it's the distance to a castle somewhere from some point. Um, but technically, like, that's the technical definition, but most people um, think of an ultra as being anything either 60 miles or 100 miles would be common distances, but that can be 10 day races, run as far as you can, or they can be a thousand mile race. They can be anything like, long. Wow, Anything so if you have a 10 day that. race, like how long do you run from the sunrise up to sunset and then go to sleep? You can run, it's usually around a track, so everyone's in one small area and they can count the distances easily and people just run as many hours of the day as they like. Wow. Um, I have a friend from Mongolia who lives in the US at the moment and he is raw vegan and he, he runs 10 day races and he, I believe he ran 1,300 kilometers in 10 days, wow. which is impressive, like that's... Um, what I want to know is how do you have that much free time in order to run that much? <laughs> you take 10 yeah. days off work and you don't sleep much. He okay. runs He runs for 11 and a half hours, takes 30 minute, a 30 minute nap, okay. and then runs for another 11 and a half hours, takes a 30 minute nap, and that's one day out of the way. Wow. And he ke keeps that going for 10 days. So he's getting one hour of sleep every day. For, so he's getting 10 hours sleep in 10 days. That is incredible. And I running, am a crabby yeah, yeah. mofo if I don't get my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. He's running like... Does he sleep like 10 days after that? like 90 miles a day or something. Like seven, uh, 85 miles a day. Okay, so what pushes somebody to, to have that kind of drive? <laughs> that insanity. Um, like who wants to like be in that much pain? It sounds well, that's, like pain. Let's, one of the greatest ultra runners of all time, Giannis Kouros, defines an ultra as a distance where, for the individual where they have to go beyond the physical. Right. And he says it's like beyond mind, body and spirit, um, something greater than that. He doesn't really, know, can't really say exactly what it is, but not many people can do it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting 
Do you feel like you're in pain when you're running, or you're in such good shape now that you you can handle it just fine, and now it's just about picking up speed? No, I'm not in speed. pain. Uh, if I'm in, if I have acute pain, I don't I don't run. If I have like you know, if this is like, if I'm causing damage to my body that I'm going to take a long time to recover from, I'll, I'll just stop running. I'm not. Okay. To me, it's about sustainability. Um, I, I value injury-free running. Mm -hmm. So if I get a niggle in my knee, I'll just stop and relax my knee and just rotate my kneecap, and and, and then I'm good to go again. So I sort of fix things before they become an issue. Right, right. Um, like, how do you avoid injury as a runner who by, runs that by much? coming to my running workshops and learning. <laughs> <laughs> Is it I, all about form, just having good form? Are you, like, do you have a stretching time. routine? Like, like, how does somebody just really start to take off with the running uh, without getting injuries? Because injuries could always set you back. Yeah, um, so, you know, if you're carrying some extra weight, that obviously makes it more difficult because it's more impact. But if you're bouncing up and down while you're running, that also creates more impact. If you're running on hard surfaces with bare feet or minimal footwear, that's more impact. Um, so your body can handle these things, but you have to adapt to it. And if you're too much too soon. So if you are heavier, how would you start? I would start by learning the most efficient, smooth way of running. So I would be doing like chi running. That's, that's a good book that explains it pretty clearly where you're just sort of having soft knees and soft hips and, and then falling forwards from your ankles. So gravity is taking you in the forward direction and then just pick your feet up behind you rather than driving your legs out in front and using lots of muscle um, and, uh, and potentially over striding and heel striking and, right. and like wasting energy going into the ground. You don't want heel to strike. heel strike, you want to you want do just it, pick run, your feet up your behind toes. you. So be falling forwards, letting gravity take you forwards, pick your feet up behind you. It's very minimal energy required for that. And, um, and it's very smooth, like you want to run, your head wants to be like smooth. So all the cushioning happens in the legs and the hips by having soft knees and hips. And also there's bouncing and stuff is happening down there, but your upper body should just be pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty steady. smooth. Yeah, like pretty a, steady. Like a gimbal. Like, like your head gimbal. is like a gimbal. Just like that. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I rarely stretch. Um, I'm not against stretching, but I just, I don't, I feel like because I eat, a, uh, like I eat all raw food all the time, it's quite hydrating, gives me all the minerals, vitamins, mm -hmm. you know, the nutrients I need, I just, I get them sleeping. I gen, you know, there's days where I don't sleep as much as others, but I try to catch up again. And just having enough sleep and a good diet, uh, of fresh fruits and vegetables, I tend to be quite flexible. Like, you know, like I can always do the lotus, like lotus things. And, yeah, yeah. You look like you probably are hyper flexible. In some ways, but in other ways, I can. Behind your head. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> But, um, then you got to put your hands down and lift yourself up from that position. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't tried that one. But, uh, but then like in a split, like I can only do like 90 degrees. Right, okay. So I'm inflexible in other ways. Right, right, right. But, so. um, I don't need that for running though. <laughs> right, you kind of lost me with the leg behind the head. I was like stunned to see that he could do that. So that's pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> how fast do you run? I can run. On average, like, I can run 60 miles on easy terrain, like 100 kilometers, in under 10 hours. Okay, like how much is that a, a mile? 60 miles. But like per mile, minute per mile, you know? Uh, Are you like a seven-minute mile or? What is that? Like what's um, like? I don't know. When you do ultra marathons, like you're probably not running as fast as you would if you're doing a mile, right? Well, 60 miles in 10 hours. That's six miles per hour. So that's 10 minute miles on average. Okay. That's including bathroom, stopping. Right, right. And you usually run in Vibram shoes, right? The five finger shoes? Or are you yeah, running in? That's all I've run in since 2008. Like for like 13 years now. Right. I just the toe shoes, yeah. And or you run on the beach barefoot. I yeah, I love I running barefoot, for sure. And I run, this year I've been running a lot. Um, I run about a mile on road and concrete to the beach and then run along the beach miles and then when I come back do some more road and concrete there for another mile. Right, so that's all happening because you're you live in Australia, right? Where in Australia? I'm actually living in Mexico for the okay. last eight months. I haven't well, gone he's to Australia. from Australia, but he's living there because of why? Yeah, the pandemic. Like the, the rules in Australia are so ridiculous right now. Um, right. It's just not. So you're afraid if you go back to Australia you won't be able to get out or you have to I'm go through I'm not afraid, quarantine. that's a reality. Right, the they reality. Haven't, you haven't been able to fly out of Australia as a resident since March last year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so... So I just kept traveling. <laughs> and then if you're in Mexico, it's pretty flat. Like, how do you find all the races? Like, where's, like, the race resource? Well, the, every race that I've entered 
has in the last year has been cancelled. So I've, I've just been doing my own running. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And then how do you stay motivated to run all the time? Like what's driving you? Uh, I mean, I love it. It's like how do you stay motivated to eat your favorite foods all the time? Okay. <laughs> it's easy, right? Um, was it a love at first sight when you started running, or was it just something that kind of slowly evolved? Running is something that gets easier when you're better at it, like like many things in life. And um, you know, if you're running with bad form and, and it, it, everything's aching and hurting, it's not so much fun, right? But right, right. I, um, I think I had good coaches that inspired me um, when I was younger, and yeah, I just, um, I just, I had that sense of adventure. Like I love when I. You know, I love going into a new trail that I've never seen before and then it's like I wonder where this way goes and I wonder where that. I'll just go in and explore the labyrinth, the maze of trails and um, it's like the, the explorer kind of come explorer instinct I guess. Right. And I, I really enjoy that. Um, every time I get on something new. And I love just being out there on my own. Um, just with minimal gear, like just with a pair of shorts and nothing right. else. Like and you don't bring water or anything like that. If I need to, I do. Um, but if I, if I run for two or three hours, I don't need water. It's longer I do. <laughs> okay. So has that run this morning affected you, or is that like just simple? No, that was fun. That was yeah, that was nothing. So what's like, like on average, like how many hours a day do you run? Um, like I know you probably train more at some yeah, points in time, and then you might It's completely do different. There's days where I don't run. Um, there's weeks where I only run two or three times. But I liked running. I'd love to run like a half marathon every day, but, oh, okay. but uh, life, you know, life has other things <laughs> that I love to do. I've been doing a lot of Latin dancing in Mexico, taking advantage of that while, while I'm in that environment yeah. and learning that and getting better at that. Um, so I've been spending like 30 hours a week doing that. I spend about 25 hours doing um, programming work on my computer to, to pay for my okay. lifestyle. His travels, I yeah, know. His, his lifestyle my, uh, sounds amazing. Tropical He's, fruits and things. Tell me about how you're... The, programming job. So you have an online job where you're able yeah. to live and travel the world. So how does that work? Yeah, I, my friend has a business in Australia and I've known him since I was 10 years old so we have a lot of trust and so it's a great environment to work in. Um, he knows I work hard and I do a good job and I'm not going to let any clients down and, so, and, and I know that he's always got my back. So, so get into computer programming or computers of some kind and <laughs> bottom line if you want to have an online business where you can travel the world, like you travel yeah. the world, right? Yeah, any online business, right. you know, could be printing t-shirts online and mailing them out, like anything, any successful online business is... So pre-pandemic, how, uh, how many days do you spend in Australia, <laughs> roughly? Are you always traveling uh, for I, races I would, and stuff? For in recent years, I would be spending five to seven months traveling and, and then you know, the rest in Australia, but usually about five. Actually, I'd spend about three to five months in Australia. Okay. Yeah, it kind of was getting less and less each year. Okay, so it's not a huge Usually deal. the summer in yeah. Australia. Okay, because it's so beautiful there? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. And the fruits are good. And, where do you live in Australia? Christmas with family. Uh, I live. I grew up on the central coast of New South Wales, in a beautiful area where there's amazing beaches and the biggest saltwater lakes in Australia and mountains all close by. But now I live up just up near the Gold Coast, like the, just on the New South Wales side of the Queensland border. Um, and it's, uh, it's like subtropical there, and it's, it's nice. It's a nice area, and there's a lot of beautiful nature. Do you have land where you're growing fruit trees? No, not yet. But that, that's going to happen. Um, yeah, so that's like yeah. a lot of us at the fruit festival all want to have land where we can have our own little fruit forest, you know, and just go out in the backyard and get the freshest, ripest fruit uh, that you can, you know. Like I have a mulberry tree, for example, and I get fresh mulberries all the time, which is pretty amazing because you'll never see them in the stores. You just see them dried all the time. Um, but yeah, so how would you say that, how much would you say the diet contributes to your performance? feel like? Oh, it's a lot. I, I used to race on a cooked vegan diet mm -hmm. and on that diet compared to a standard diet I was I was running more and, and like doing more but when I went raw vegan right. like fresh like fruit based you know fresh raw vegan food I just I felt more alive and I and I was like rather than just noticing that I was doing more I was like what can I do next like I need to do something like oh, I want to do something and like everything got more exciting so uh, and the difference I do a hundred like a 60 mile race kilometer race on a cooked vegan diet and it would take me a week of like hobbling around like an old man before I could think about jogging or running again and now I can just run the next day um, and I'm at whatever 80 to 90 percent you know speed and so it's really cool yeah I think that's amazing you guys so you know 
If you want to have more athletic performance, just keep increasing uh, the amount of fruits and vegetables that you have in your diet and lifestyle. <laughs> and the more raw that you have, the more that you're going to increase all of your physical capabilities. <laughs> and my kids came out, so I'm going to end the interview. But thank you so much, Grant, for coming out today. Well, Do you have pleasure. any closing statements or thoughts you want everyone to know, tips? Uh, <laughs> live with courage. Do what you love. Love what you do. I love it. Thank you so much. My All pleasure. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks Peace out. <laughs>